Uh, I'm Oriel Orlov, I'm a visual artist and I have an exhibition at the Bacalera. My work is, I guess, research-based. I spend a lot of time in different places doing research on site, in archives, over long periods of time and also creating relationships with people in those places. So the projects emerge over two to three years usually and I work in bodies of work, projects that combine uh, various works that are independent but have a, create a conversation with each other. And I'm interested in stories that connect the past and the present and the remnants of the past in the present, how we live with ghosts. The exhibition starts with a piece that consists of postcards. The work is called Geraniums Are Never Read. It shows uh, geranium postcards from all over the world. Geraniums are indigenous to South Africa. They were brought to Europe um, in the 17th century. Initially, the flowers were called African geraniums and it took about 150 years for botanists to realize that these flowers that we still call geraniums are not actually geraniums but they are a different, a different family which is called pelargonium. They are on the balconies in Switzerland in the mountains where I grew up. Uh, they are in Spain, in California, really all over the world and we don't think of them as plants or flowers that have come from somewhere else and that are implicated in a colonial history. The works in the rest of the exhibition, they develop this theme of plants and their relationship to colonial history. So the first piece that we see when we actually enter the exhibition is an audio piece, which is called What Plants Were Called Before They Had a Name and it's an audio dictionary of plant names of a dozen South African languages. <laughs> These plant names were displaced when uh, European botanists came to South Africa and renamed plants and gave them Latin and English names. Then in uh, the next work is Grey Green Gold, which is an installation that uh, combines two stories. The story of the garden that Nelson Mandela and his fellow inmates created on Robben Island in the courtyard of the prison where they were for 18 years. Uh, that was not just a garden, but that was actually an actor in history. Um, and uh, this story is connected to the story of a flower, uh, Strelitzia regina. At the same time as Mandela was in prison, the botanical garden in Cape Town was breeding a new yellow Strelitzia regina, which eventually was named Mandela's Gold after Mandela became the first elected president of South Africa. Um, and it's still being bred in the botanical garden, but it has a predator, which is the European squirrel that Cecil Rhodes, who used to own the land, he introduced it and it still lives there. Then there is a video work, The Fairest Heritage, which uses um, archival films that I found and that were made in 1963 on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Botanical Garden in Cape Town. And the films show the celebrations of this anniversary. They show white uh, visitors enjoying the gardens. Um, they show what we could call botanical nationalism, the way that flowers and plants have been used and are still being used in some cases to promote a sense of national identity and the only Africans we see are the workers. 
So I'm showing these films, we were projecting these films, and then I was working with a South African actor, Lindiwe Machikiza, and she inhabits the films and confronts the films. Um, and so we can imagine maybe an alternative history. Then there is a, a trilogy of films, um, which is about uh, medicinal plants in South Africa. So the first film, The Crown Against Mafavuge, um, is a restaging of a 1940 court case against an indigenous healer, Mafavuge Ngobo, who was accused of using European plants in his uh, compositions. So the second film, Imbizo Ka Mafavuge, um, sees Mafavuge come back into the present and organize his own People's Tribunal, which talks about the, the international pharmaceutical companies who are uh, stealing indigenous knowledge. And then the third film shows uh, the different practices uh, involved in uh, medicinal, uh, traditional medicine, from people who gather the plants in the wild, the, the selling in markets, shops who produce medicines, even factories who make sort of modern tinctures. So it's the whole chain of relations and processes uh, which we see without necessarily understanding. And then we also have portraits in a way of six medicinal plants. They're called muti. Uh, muti is the Zulu word for tree, but it's also uh, the word used to designate all medicinal material. And then in the last space is an installation called Soil Affinities, which continues this theme of plants and their relation to history and politics, but through agriculture. And it, it started with a residency in Paris, in the outskirts of Paris, um, in a suburb called Aubervilliers, which is situated in a former agricultural plain that up to 1900 produced 90% uh, of all vegetables consumed in Paris and then was displaced by the Industrial Revolution and the factories that were starting to be set up. At the same time as France was also um, starting uh, to use its new colonies in West Africa um, for economic purposes through plants, through agriculture. So they set up a series of test gardens, a colonial garden in Paris, where plants would be brought maybe from Latin America. The so-called economic plants like coffee and cocoa and uh, these plants and then would be bred and transported in boxes to a series of colonial test gardens in West Africa where they would be acclimatized. So the installation follows all these networks from Paris and the remnants of the colonial garden to the former test gardens in West Africa, to the contemporary uh, commercial farms that were set up after independence that produce vegetables in Senegal but for Europe, to be sold in wholesale markets in Europe, um, and also the workers' gardens that were set up when the factories were built for the workers to grow their own vegetables. So it, it, yeah, it kind of moves through these, through these networks.